Okay, okay, welcome back to another video, 2018 exam two. Um, we're gonna get straight into it. 2019 exam two's video took way too long, so I'm gonna try to rush this one. So if I'm skipping over some stuff, some concepts, just go watch 2019's version. I went into it, I went into more, I went more into depth uh, about certain concepts and rules if you wanna get into the details. So we're gonna start off with 2018 exam two number one. So it's gonna pop on the screen right there. I'm gonna start off by drawing the circuit real quick. Um, so let's draw what they gave us. Okay, let's so now we're gonna start off with the first step, choosing your direction of current. So I'm gonna make the current go from the battery this way, this way, and this way. And this time is gonna split into two at, at this junction. I'm gonna make it continue that way and this way. So we're gonna name this one I2 and we're gonna name this one I3, okay? So after that, um, I believe we are, okay, I believe we are finished with that. Okay, yeah, I believe we are finished. Find the direction of that, direction of that. And then now we need the direction of the loop. We're gonna do it counterclockwise. We're gonna do this one, that direction of the loop. And we could use the big one or we could use the small one. I'm just gonna go with the small one. I'm gonna go with the small one. So we're gonna use this direction right there. And now since we're done with that, let's get into solving the problem. So let's write our loop and junction formulas. So right here, we got a junction. Whatever's coming in is equal to what's coming out. So the first form we're gonna need is I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. That's the first formula. Now the second one we're gonna need is for this loop and this loop. So let's get started. For loop one, let's start with the process. We're doing clockwise. So we're gonna start with this battery. Positive to negative is decreasing, so it's gonna be a positive V2. V2, and then the current's going that way, is going up. Is gonna be I, I, R4, plus I, R4, plus I, R4. Oh, it's not been, it's I1. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. To name, label this, this is called I1. This is I1, I1 is everything here. So, it's gonna be I1, R4, I1, R4, and then we're gonna get here, it's going from negative to positive, so it's gonna be a, negative V1 minus V1 plus minus V1 plus I1, R1, and then we're gonna go down here. It's gonna be I2, it's gonna be plus I2, R2, and then we're gonna get back to the battery, and that's all equal to zero. Okay, negative V1, negative V1 plus I1, R1, plus I2, R2, plus V2, plus I1, I1, R4. Yes, I1, R4. Where's R4? Yes, I1, R4. Okay, now we're gonna move on to loop two. Loop two, we're gonna start from the battery. Clockwise direction, we know which direction is going. So it's gonna be positive to negative, which means it's decreasing, so it's gonna be positive. Positive V3, that way, go up. Current's coming this way, you're going up, so it's gonna be negative. Negative I2, R2, going this way. Positive I3, I3, positive I3, plus I3, R3 is equal to zero. And let me see, minus R2 plus I3, R3 is so zero. And that should be all the equations we need for number one. Let me double check the answer. Um, V3 minus I2 R2 plus I3 R3 is equal to zero, and negative V1, that I1 is equal to R2, and yep, that's it for number one. Let's move on to number two. Okay, so to be more time efficient, I already drew the diagram on so I don't have to waste time with all those noises while I'm solving this problem. So 2018 exam two, number two. Um, the circuit below all R, C's, and V's are known. Circuit was put together a long time ago with switch closed. Find the currents in each resistor and the charges on the capacitor. So that's part one of this problem. So we already have our circuit. We're gonna start off by doing the current stuff. So we're gonna 
name our direction of current. This is going to be called I. It's going to continue. I does not change. I is not going to change. It's going to be the same I throughout the whole thing. So after we know the currents, we're going to need to label our capacitance. So our capacitance, we're going to need to, let's make this positive and let's make this negative. Positive. Let's do positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And just, for, so, just so you guys know, positive goes to negative in the direction. So that's going to be a direction of the capacitance. So it's going to be going like that, like that, and like that. It goes towards the negative side. So now since we're done with that, we're going to do the last step, which is doing our loops. So this one has one, two, three, four loops. So we're going to need three loop equations. So we're going to do the first one, the second one, and the third one. So let me see. OK, so for the first one, we're going to do this loop right here. That's going to be loop one. Actually, no, we don't need this one. We don't need this one. Yeah, we don't need this loop. We're going to do these two individual loops, these two individual loops, and then we're going to do this big, long loop. That's number three. It's going to be number one, number two, and it's going to be number three, the whole loop, the big one. So we're going to start off with loop number one. Let's start off with loop number one. Okay, loop number one, we're going to start off clockwise. The same I, I2, it's going to be I, R2, going this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. You're going up clockwise and it's going down, so it's going to be negative Q1 over C1. So for this one, you're going to need your formula. Um, v is equal to Q over C. So you can use that formula right there. Yeah, that's the formula you're going to use. V is equal to Q over C. So it's Q1 over C1, and that should be it for loop 1. That's equal to 0. And from that, you can find what Q1 is. Q1 is equal to C1 R2 I. So you can get what Q1 is. So now for loop 2, which is going to be the, the bottom one, we're going to do the same thing. So it's going this way. Clockwise is going to be I R3 minus q2 over c2 is equal to 0. So now you know what q2 is. q2 is equal to c2 r3 i. OK, now for the last one, the last one is going to be the whole loop. We're going to start from the battery. Negative to positive is going to be a positive increase, which means negative v. So it's going to be negative v plus i R1, continue, plus I, R2, plus I, R3, and then it finishes, equal to zero. And if you want to, it says find the current in each resistor and the charge in the capacitor. If you want to find the current, just move this V to this side. I can do it real quick. V is equal to I, R1, plus R2, plus R3 and then subtract or divide both sides by that. And then you get I is equal to V over R1 plus R2 plus R3. And that is the current across this circuit. And that's the answer they get in the answer key. And that's it for part A. Now we're going to do part B on this side. Part B which is where they ask you if the switch is open and a long time passes, obtain a sufficient number of equations you can solve for all the currents and charges. So for part B, um, the first equation we're going to need is there's an equation you use before the switch is closed, when the switch is closed, is equal to when the switch is open. So we're going to take this value right here, these values right here. We're going to take this, and we're going to say this is negative, negative, OK. We're taking the Q. The Q is what we're taking. We're taking the Q. That's the charge. The Q is going to be negative Q1 for that one because it's capacitance 1. If we ask capacitance 1, so negative Q1, and this is positive Q2, plus Q2 is equal to after when the switch is open, we're going to have a new Q. It's going to be a new Q1. 
It's gonna be a new one. It's gonna be Q tilde. They named it Q tilde, but we're gonna do negative Q1 plus Q2 and then add the sign on top. That's the first equation we're gonna need. That is describing the charges before, so you go to the charges opened after. So the second one we're gonna use is, we're gonna do the same thing again, but this time we're only gonna need, we're gonna do the loop of, which loop are we gonna do? Okay, yeah, we're gonna do this loop right here. We're gonna do this loop, number one, we're gonna do this loop right here to include both of these, and then we're gonna do the loop of the whole thing, because we're only gonna need three equations for this one. So let's start off with this loop right here. So we're gonna start off negative to positive is positive, so it's gonna be negative V. Negative V plus I R1, and then you're going down, it's gonna be plus the new the new charge is Q tilde over C1 plus the same thing. Q2 over C2, but with that sign, and then you're going back again, and that's it, and that's equal to zero. So that's the first equation you get. The second one you're gonna get is when you do the whole thing, it's just gonna, you're just copying this right here. So the second one you're gonna need is negative V plus I R1 plus I R2 plus I R3 is equal to zero. And those are all the equations you need for, to solve for the second one. The only thing that's different is that the switch is opened, so it's gonna be a new Q value and the capacitance. So those are the three equations you're gonna need for part B, and that's it for number two. Let's move on to number three. Okay, and for number three, um, I didn't have time to work this one, but I'm going to work it tomorrow, and I'm not coming back to film another video. So if you want to see the working for number three, you can DM me on my Instagram. It's gonna be in the link in the description. If you really want to know how number three is solved, you can DM me on Instagram and I'll send you a picture of my work. Um, but yeah, I don't have it solved right now, so you're gonna to have to DM me on Instagram for that one. But let's move on to number four, the last question. So after hours of searching, searching the internet, trying to figure out how to solve number four, I finally figured out how to solve number four. So easy. Okay. So I'm gonna put the problem up here, so right there, so you can see it. And uh, it says a spherical shell with radius RA and outer radius RB has resistivity one and inside a second sphere with inner radius. Current I is floating radially out. Find difference in electric potential between a point A and B1 marked in the figure. So uh, let me draw what they gave real quick. That one, then we got a big one, then we got a bigger one. And then we got A and B, so this is A, this is B, and then we got R, A, R, B, R, C, so this is R, A, R, B, and then we got R, C. And that is the main thing they gave us, and then we got that, 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 okay. So we have all that, we have all that and we're trying to find the difference in electric potential. So the equations we're gonna need for this one is, the first one we're gonna need is the E1, the electric field is equal to the resistivity J. And then the next one we're gonna need from that one, we're gonna need the J. J is equal to I over A. And then after that, that's the main thing we're gonna need. And then the change in velocity is equal to negative E dot dr. And those are the three equations we're gonna need for this one. Um, so let's get started. You okay? Yep, okay. Okay, so for this one, we're trying to find the lift potential between A and B. So we're trying to find this part right here and that part right there. So we have R, B, A, and B, so it's gonna be, we're gonna have two, so we're gonna need this one right here and that one right there. So for number one, it's gonna be V from, V from R, B minus R, A, it's gonna be negative integral from R, 
A to R, B, and then E dot DR. We know E is equal to that, J is equal to that. So E with plugging in J is going to be rho I over A. And A is 4 pi R squared. So it's going to be equal to rho I over 4 pi R squared. So we put that right here. Rho, and this is for the number one. We're given the number one, the outer radius RB has resistivity R1. And yeah, so this one's gonna be R1 or rho one. Rho one I over four pi R squared, which is equal to, put it all out, I over four pi R squared, one over R squared which is gonna be equal to negative. So it's gonna be equal to negative. That's gonna have a negative, and this already has a negative. So it's gonna be positive at the end of the day. I, one over R squared is gonna be equal to one over R. So it's gonna be one over four pi, one over, don't forget, is from RB minus RA. Let me see. Okay, yep, and that is how they get it inside the answer key. So that is the first part right there. First part right there. Now the second part, using the exact same technique, exact same thing, you're just gonna replace it with, so that's number one. Number two is gonna be V from RC minus V from RB doing the exact same thing is going to equal to the row 2i over 4 pi and then you have 1 over rc minus 1 over rb and after that you get all that and then you combine it you combine this right here and this right here and you add it and that's the final answer they get you add 1 plus 2 add both potentials and that's the final v so simple, but you just gotta combine formulas. That's the main thing for this one. So this one is actually easy, surprisingly. But when I saw it, I was like, I didn't understand nothing. But these are the main three formulas you're gonna need. And that's it for number four. And that's it for 2018 exam two. Thank you guys for watching. This is one of the hard ones, one of the hardest ones I've done from all the physics stuff. So thank you guys for watching. Leave a like on the video, subscribe, or on the road to 2K. I'm not a physics YouTuber, by the way, not a physics YouTuber. So don't call me physics YouTube guy. I'm not a physics YouTuber. Thank you guys for watching and good luck on your exams and I'll see you guys in exam three.